There are a ton of survivor sided tiles in Dead by Daylight. One tile especially stands out though for its incredible balance, in that if either the survivor or killer misplays, the other gets punished, that tile being T-Walls. In this guide, I'll be running you through how you should be playing T-Walls as both killer and survivor, as well as mind games and fakes you can do to throw the other side off. First things first, what even are T-Walls? A T-Wall is one where there is one wall in the shape of a T, and another one in the shape of an L. Sometimes I'll call them T-Wall L-Wall, as is the proper term to call them, but the shorter, easier thing to say is just T-Walls. Both of these walls have windows here. There are some slight variations from map to map, such as the L-Wall being much shorter on Coldwind, or much longer on the Swamp. This is the only maze tile that can spawn that does not have a pallet in it. The other maze tiles being the two variations of jungle gyms. Uh, nice swing, dude. Whee! Boy. You really should have dropped that pallet. You really should have dropped that pallet. The single pallet tile. I saw somebody else on the other side here, I think. Too. And the two variations of four walls if you want to count those, though they don't spawn in quite the same pattern. Alright, as for running it as survivor, ideally you want to be running it clockwise. If you go from window to window clockwise, hugging the wall as closely as possible, and the killer chases you by going around the outside of the wall, this is basically an infinite, and you should be able to run this until entity blockers or bloodlust. Running clockwise will also basically be infinite if the killer decides to vault the windows. The killer chasing clockwise and going around outsides or vaulting gives you enough distance to make it to the next window. Keep in mind though, the killer is the one who gets to decide which way to loop around, since you have to mirror their movements as survivor if you want to avoid getting hit. As killer, you shouldn't, in most cases as I'll explain later, loop around this way. Switch the direction up somewhere, or cut through the area in between the walls. Let's say you're survivor, the killer went through the center somewhere along the way, and you're coming around the T-wall or the L-wall, doesn't really matter which. You've got two windows you can head to, the one on the wall beside you, which you're perpendicular to, meaning you can get a fast vault, or the one on the wall ahead of you, the window you're parallel to, meaning that taking it will probably result in a medium vault, which is much more dangerous. Decisive strike! Double vaulted? She's crazy, man. Swing and a miss! Oh, am I chasing somebody? I am! Where did you come from? <laughs> Medium vault in a nutshell. Let's say you head toward the window closest to you. You have two options here. You can either fast vault through the window, making it to the other side and staying safe if the killer keeps going, and usually still safe even if the killer swings. But, if the killer changes direction, they'll meet you on the other side and get a hit. Your other option is to fake the window. Run in the direction of the window like you're gonna take it, so by going around the wall, breaking the killer's line of sight, making it seem like there's a good enough chance he'll take the window. After faking the window, you can make it either to the opposite wall or even maybe the next nearby tile. You're safe to do that if the killer predicts your vault and goes to the other side, but you'll get hit if the killer actually goes in the original direction. This whole interaction works on the inside of the L wall going around that corner, or on either side of the T walls. It's basically like a 50-50 guessing game for both killer and survivor. It's like you're playing rock, paper, scissors, but ties are somehow impossible. You just want to guess what the other will do. There are ways as killer though to convince the survivor you'll go the way that you won't. As killer, on T-Walls you can take advantage of your red light and moonwalking. Most killer players probably honestly forget that they have a red light shining in front of them, since only the survivors can see it. The red light can be a good indication to survivors where you're coming from, by seeing the light around corners and such. You can manipulate the red light by moonwalking, walking while facing backwards so that you go one way while the red light faces the other way. 
on T walls in the situations mentioned before. You can continue chasing survivors around the wall. Get just far enough that your red light goes around the corner, making it seem like the killer will follow behind the red light shortly after, baiting the survivor into vaulting the window. After you show the red light around the corner, you can moonwalk back to the other side to get a hit on the survivor who fell for the bait. Alternatively, you can also counter the survivor window faking the window. While chasing the survivor around the wall, you can moonwalk around the corner, so the red light doesn't give away your intentions to the survivor, making it seem like you double back around, making the survivor not want to vault the window, giving you a hit since you followed right behind them. To do this, you can either moonwalk the entire distance to make it seem like you're staying on the other side, or you can start going around the wall forwards, then turn around to make it look like you turned around to meet them on the other side, then moonwalk the rest of the way in the original direction, with this variation being more effective against experienced survivors who won't just vault the moment they see the red light. This series of mind games also works on other windows like the shack, but isn't quite as easy to get hits on because of shack's longer walls, and the survivors can potentially use the pallet to bait them out if you outplay them. Also, keep in mind, this series of mind games as killer will only work if the survivor you're playing against actually looks behind them. If they just hold W and like to run around, then you're just busy mind gaming yourself while the survivor's off doing their own thing. So these mind games and plays only work against at least semi-experienced survivors, and aren't worth going for at low levels of play. T-walls, I see. Hello! Woah! Yeah, you woah! Oh, jeez, that play! Okay, this pal is still active though. Nice, Meg. Hey, that's a super unsafe pallet. You should use it. Nice, Nia. Cool, man. Oh, that was not the play, was it? Cool. It is unfortunate. Let's hit her with a double fake. Nice. And they are getting gens done. To be fair. That works. So, that's what happens if you keep looping around the current wall. But what if, as survivor, you go to the other one? You should almost never be doing this, but sometimes you'll have to as you'll get hit otherwise. For example here. I couldn't loop around the L wall again. It's too short on cold wind. I would have gotten hit for sure. So I had to run to the T-Wall. Again, there's two options, take it or fake it, though both are decently dangerous. In this example, I faked it, causing the clown here to start going to the other side to meet me there, before realizing I wasn't even going there, and having to go back the original way. Here, this fake allowed me to get to the pal in the nearby jungle gym without getting hit. I'm not gonna make it to the L-Wall here though, I don't think. I'll try it anyway. Oh. Mm. Gonna fake this. <laughs> he fell for it. Anyway, because of the amount of 50 50 guessing games on T walls, you typically want to use them as a chance to make it to the next tile to run the killer on, rather than relying on T walls to keep the killer at bay. There's too much guessing that goes into this tile, and without pallets, there's no way to break the killer's bloodlust, meaning they get faster and faster until they get a hit. Only rely on T walls if you can run it clockwise and the killer never changes the looping direction or it's next to another strong setup such as a pallet that you can combine the windows with, which I'll discuss in a second. Otherwise, you should typically only be running it when you're put in a position where you have to, and you should be keeping an eye out for the next tile you can make it to from there. Alright, let's consider another situation. 
What if there's T-walls, and they're right next to a smaller tile that has a single pallet in it? This brings T-walls from being a dangerous place to be, to a nasty setup for survivors to use. As an experienced survivor player, you can run through the pallet, take the T-wall or L-wall window, mirror the killer's direction, run around and through the pallet, take the T-wall or L-wall window, mirror the killer, and repeat until you have to drop the pallet. This drastically increases the time the pallet will last. Additionally, if there is another nearby tile as well, you can run there when you need to instead of dropping the pallet, saving the nasty setup for later. You technically don't even need the pallet to still remain unbroken for a plan like this to work, the pallet just makes it stronger. If there is, say, an L-wall, and another random wall close to the L-wall window, well, you can mirror the killer around either side of the random wall, then take the L-wall window when the killer commits to a direction, mirror them around the L-wall, make it back to the other wall, rinse and repeat. This can still be decently strong, but without a pallet, there's no way to break the killer's bloodlust once they start getting faster and faster. Setups like this aren't exclusive to T-walls. Sometimes you'll find a small single pallet tile just outside the window of a long wall jungle gym, or outside the shack window, making for some completely nasty setups. You can run setups like these for a while before you have to drop the pallet, and if you can make it to another tile instead of dropping the pallet in this one, that's saving a tool that can buy you so much time later. So, what killers can do unique stuff on T-walls? I guess you can trap T-walls as trapper, but you shouldn't be wasting time and effort trapping something already this unsafe for survivors. Trap the more safe areas. While cloaked and uncloaking, Wraith can use the uncloaking speed boost to do any of the previously mentioned mind games with a burst of speed, pretending to commit to one direction, and then either switching to the other side or following through and going the original way. As well, all of these mind games can become much more lethal in the hands of a good hillbilly player. If he starts charging his chainsaw before the red light goes around the corner, no matter which of these mind games he does, whether it be moonwalking back, moonwalking the first way, or doing the double fake, if he successfully reads what the survivor will do, he can get a chainsaw down. You could potentially do this with Leatherface and his chainsaw as well, but because he doesn't get the same burst of speed that Billy does, it becomes harder to secure downs this way. None of this entire guide even applies to Nurse. She blinks. Similar to Billy, Huntress can start readying a hatchet before doing any of the previously mentioned mind games in order to meet the survivors with a hatchet to the face. Though, you'd want to pull out the hatchet much later than revving Billy's chainsaw though, as the hatchet readies up faster and comes with decreased movement speed greater than Billy's decreased movement from revving the chainsaw. You could always trap this tile as hag, making any option the survivor does a bad one. Doctor, you can try to time your shocks to prevent the survivors from vaulting to give you a hit. Pig can be insane in the hands of a good player. She can crouch to hide her terror radius and red light. T-walls are tall walls, you can't see over them, meaning the survivor can't know where you are apart from which wall you're behind, just have no idea where behind the wall. You could get some spicy dash attacks this way, or maybe double back and uncrouch to go back to regular speed and get a sneaky hit in. You can also do a fake roar by starting to charge the dash before cancelling and uncrouching to bait the survivors into running off or misplaying. The perk I'm All Ears on Pig makes T-Walls deadly, being able to mask your position while knowing the position of the survivor. In the hands of an expert Pig player, T-Walls become a mind game playground. Improvise, try out a few things and see what works. Clown can reduce your vision and speed with his gas, in addition to forcing medium vaults, making you typically never want to stay at T-Walls for more than a couple vaults if needed against this killer. Spear is Spear. Basically everywhere on the map is infinite possibility for mind games. Like Pig, improvise with her ability, see what works. As for just chasing without using her ability, you can actually take an especially good advantage on T-Walls of Spirit's fucky vault animation. Killers should most often not be vaulting T-Walls, but Spirit can mind game with it. Her vault animation is pretty normal looking on the killer screen, but on the survivor screen it's completely messed up. For survivors, they see the Spirit standing in front of the window, motionless for like a second, before teleporting to the other side on their screens. So as Spear, you can walk up to a window on T-Walls, not vault it, but the survivor seeing you standing in front of the window will think you're in the middle of the vault animation, and will likely try to loop the wall. Stand still for like a second, paying attention to which side the survivor went around, and meet them on that side by turning around and getting to hit them. If the survivor stands still on the other side of the window thinking you're fake vaulting, then actually vault, or use your ability to meet them on the other side. If they straight up leave and go to the next tile, well then I guess trying to fake vault wasn't the right play here. 
A survivor, you should be leaving when you see the spirit up at a window. Whether she's vaulting or not, T-Walls are incredibly dangerous against a good spirit player. Legion can vault the windows to put survivors into deep wounds, but because his vault is kinda eh compared to the survivors, he's probably better off going around the windows each time. If the survivor is not yet infected, Plague can infect the windows to make sure the survivor gets infected while playing the tile. Usually as Plague, you only want to get the survivor infected and then in one, rather than infect until they're broken and then in one. as fully infecting them usually takes a while if the survivor is not in a dead zone. On T-Walls, if you manage to successfully do one of these mind games, it's possible you could use it to back rev and fully infect the survivor. As well, you could potentially do similar mind games with Ghostface as you can for Pig, but not quite to the same extent. Demogorgon can try one of these mind games and try to shred the survivor, but will wind up bonking the wall if he misreads. While looping around something like the long side of the T-Wall, the shred could come in especially handy. The Oni can probably do similar strats to Billy with a red light while writing up his ability to one-shot the survivor if they play the way he wants. I assume that's possible. A public test build with him released yesterday at the time of writing the script. That's pretty much what I've gotten when it comes to killers who have a unique edge on T-Walls. There's one more mind game you can do on T-Walls as killer I want to discuss. I call this mind game Tofu's Mind Game, as it was created by Otofu, so credit to him for this trick. Mm. Yo! That was my juke! He just used my mind game on myself! Dude, hell yeah! That was actually awesome! That's the first time I've seen anyone use it against me. Tofu's mind game is very interesting in that it punishes survivors for doing what seems at the time to be the right play. You can use Tofu's mind game on both the T-wall and the L-wall, but it typically works better on the L-wall. Here, you want to be chasing the survivor clockwise around the T-walls. After they vault the L-wall, go around the left side of the L-wall. Instead of coming around the corner, turn around and hide the red light and stand completely still for about 2 seconds. If the survivor is experienced and looks behind them while they run, they'll notice that your red light did not come around the corner. Naturally, this will make them think you doubled back. So to remain safe by mirroring the killer, they'll change their direction, running back in the direction of the window. So after about 2 seconds of waiting pass, moonwalk back and turn around, meeting the survivor right in front of you, giving you a hit. Okay, you did my mind game on me, touche. I ran into that. This mind game works very consistently against experienced survivors who look behind them while they run, and can be very lethal. It is especially strong on the hillbilly and leather face, as they can chainsaw down any survivors who run around the corner into their faces. You could potentially try this mind game of Spirit, where instead of standing still for two seconds, you start haunting to meet the survivor around the corner while coming out of your haunting. This mind game can work on other tiles as well, such as short wall jungle gyms. So, to recap, survivor takes L wall window. You go around left side of L wall. Don't let your red light stick around the corner, so turn around and wait for two seconds ish. Survivor thinks you doubled back and changes their direction, running straight into you. Moonwalk the rest of the way, and get a hit. It's a very unique mind game in that it only works against good survivor players, who look behind them and do what would perfectly mirror you if you weren't standing completely still. Don't try this mind game with a survivor you're chasing, seems like they don't look behind them. That's all I've got to share about T-Walls, there sure is a lot more detail to them than you'd originally think. If you have any questions about this, feel free to stop by my Twitch, or ask me directly on my Discord server, links in the description below, or leave a comment. For more Dead by Daylight guides on other tiles, as well as proper killer and survivor play and more, check the description for the playlist of all my DVD guides. I hope I was able to help, and until next time, see you in the fun. Did he just skedaddle? No, he's still here! He's playing in a way that I don't expect. It's either super big brain or really dumb. And I can't tell which, he's not gonna vault this. Oh my goodness, he vaulted at that time. What the heck is this guy? He's going that way this time? Okay, I'm so confused. This guy just might be the smartest guy ever.
is what this might be. Look, it worked that time. He does look behind him. He is smart. He's been mind gaming me this whole time. I thought he was just playing really weird, but it was considering he fell for that mind game. Like, that's a mind game that survivors only fall for when they make the correct play. Okay, he fell for that there. I'm gonna try to pre-flick this if I can. Oh, never mind. 